about hormones. So obviously blood sugar has a major effect on our hormones. The more our blood sugar goes up and down, the more cortisol and adrenaline get called to the rescue to, to buffer that out. So the more adrenal stress gets put on our body and our adrenal, our stress handling system. And the adrenals are part of the hormonal system that's connected with the sympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic nervous system is the part of the nervous system that deals with fight or flight, stress, running, fighting, fleeing, confronting. And that part of the nervous system, the more it gets turned on or flared, the more adrenaline and cortisol and stress hormones that are catabolic that break tissue down are going to be secreted. And the adrenals also produce a significant amount of sex hormone precursor. So the more we're stressed and dealing with the catabolic stress side, the less we can allocate resources to the anabolic repair and recovery parasympathetic side. So then it makes it harder for us to recover, put on muscle, feel good, turn over our neurotransmitters, and just be able to deal with and adapt to stress. So there is that on one side, and the adrenals affect kind of men and women relatively equally. But then women have their hormonal side from the ovaries that cycle throughout the month. And that part of this, the cascade is a little bit more unique because cortisol, which is that major stress hormone that we talked about, can also be made from progesterone. And so the more we are stressed, the more we can pull from the progesterone side, which then can create more estrogen dominance. So our relative ratio of progesterone to estrogen, which is typically 20 to 25 to one on average for progesterone to estrogen starts to skew. And this condition called estrogen dominance starts to occur where the percent of estrogen starts going up. And this can create more mood issues, more PMS kind of issues, um, breast tenderness, cramping, back pain. And the mood component's a big one, irritability, anxiety, depression, all those symptoms can happen as a result of that. So the more we can take away that up and down with our cortisol and the more we can take stress of that, the less estrogen dominance will kick in. Yeah, and I just wanna point out one key point. You're speaking about ratios. A lot of women come to us and say, oh, I've got so much estrogen. I'm so estrogen dominant. No, he's not saying that you have tons of estrogen. He's saying in relationship to your progesterone. So it's not that the estrogen is literally overwhelming and you have more estrogen than progesterone. That's not what's happening, correct? Correct. And, and it could be that your estrogen is actually really, really high. I'm seeing with a lot of my female patients is progesterone's low really low estrogen's also low but the ratio is still skewed so i'm seeing it like if here's progesterone right and here's estrogen what's happening both are low but progesterone's even lower so it's like are that. you seeing are you seeing estrogen overwhelm progesterone or would that be like an extreme case that'd be an extreme case and almost okay. all the time with cases like that there may be an exogenous bit of estrogen being taken mm -hmm. right uh, you definitely would see it on the birth control pill side. You may not see it come back like that because a lot of these estrogen metabolites may not come back on the test because they're not, you know, actual, the actual estradiol or estriol hormone. They're like an analog that that's a metabolite that has still an estrogenic effect, but it's not coming back in the lab. So we just know the fact that if these levels are, are that high because you're taking it, then the hormones are going to be high as well. It has okay. to be. Okay, makes sense. And toxicity then, would be a mechanism too, because if you had like yes, high beta days and you're you're recirculating all those hormones, exogenous hormones would just make it worse, right? If you're recirculating Correct. hormones. Correct. Um, plastics um, that have xenoestrogen kind of effects, whether it's phthalate or bisphenol A, and then of course you're going to have hormones in the meats, right? They're given a lot of estrogen type of hormones to make them fatter and kind of bulk up so to speak so the farmers can make more money on the slaughter there is that too so that's why you have to mitigate the toxins and the hormones and all the food and then um you have to look at the detoxification pathway so we'll run on the dutch test there's a little gas gauge in the bottom left hand corner of, of page three it's called the two methoxy hydroxy estrogen metabolite panel or i should say reading and then it's a little gas gauge we want it at least in the middle but you'll see a lot of decreased methylation so it's way to the left and that's a sign that we're not metabolizing our estrogen. Yep, that's important. So you have to address hormones. And we're not saying, hey, you just go on thyroid medication. Like that's not, you know, this is a whole system here. Adrenals are connected to your thyroid. Thyroid's connected to adrenals. The brain's involved. You mentioned the sympathetic nervous system. So if you're somebody who's working 70 hours a week, you're not taking days off and your nervous system is so revved up, you can eat a paleo diet and still have mood issues. Correct. Yep. It's very possible. So we have those kind of hormone issues. And of course, any women listening to it, 
mood may be one component of that. It could be other things as well. It could be energy. It could be back pain, cramping, breast tenderness, fluid retention. It could be all of the above. 